Game Rally CG here. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create an advanced player run shop system. Now, this system is unlike any system you've seen on YouTube, especially for Bedrock, and I'm super proud to show you guys this. So, most systems that you've seen will actually take payment from the player by the server, and then the server will then give that player an item with commands, or items with commands. This system is kind of different. Every single item that you get from the system has been legitimately earned in survival by a player in a realm or a server. And that player is acting as the shop owner who owns this shop. So what's cool is after the admin or command block user of that realm or server creates the system for that shop owner, then that shop owner has full control over editing every bit of this, every aspect of the system on their own without needing a single line of code changed. So they never have to ask the admin for any help again which is pretty amazing and I'm so proud that it worked out this way. It was a lot of effort and um, I'm happy to say that the system's already in, 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 uh, in place in a couple servers um, in one way or another. So super cool. And basically, um, yeah, the system also works on all Bedrock platforms. So it works on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, mobile, um, any, any Bedrock platform it will work on flawlessly. So let's see how this works. Right now, as you can see, the system is calibrated to sell 64 blue ice for 16 diamonds. And the slide is on indicating that it is in stock and ready to go. So all I have to do is place my diamonds in the center. On PC, I can shift press that item in there and I get the payment. I get a bunch of hearts from the shop owner um, and a message from them saying thanks for your business, which is really, really cool. Um, as you can see, this light turned off, which means the system is uh, disabled. And as you can see, yes, it's very much disabled. The redstone connection has been severed. And it's actually restocking right now. So once it fills up to 64, it will reactivate the system and then I can interact with it once again. You'll hear a bell noise when that happens. Oh, there we go. So I can once again buy more blue ice and more hearts. Awesome. So how would the shop owner modify the system to sell 32 blue ice instead? Well, let's do that. So I'm going to change the sign for firstly, because I don't want it to be false advertising. Okay, 32 blue ice for 8 diamonds. It's going to be the new, the new stats. Okay, so right here, these three, these three chests are basically the heart and brain of this whole system. This is the command center. This is where the shop owner can decide every single aspect of this whole system. So here, the shop owner is going to stock whatever item that they're going to be selling. So obviously, blue ice in this case. This is where the shop owner decides on the price. Um, they can get paid whatever they want. If they want 64 diamonds, they get 64 diamonds. Um, and there's no way to cheat the shop owner and there's no way for the player to be cheated either, which I spent a lot of effort making sure was the case. Now, they don't have to be limited to just diamonds here. The shop owner can get paid whatever they want. They can get paid in emeralds, they can get paid in gold and iron ingots, whatever they want. They can even be paid in chicken eggs. It doesn't really matter. It's up to them. They just need to change the sign out front to reflect that so the user knows what they're going to be paying with. So in this case, I'm going to be changing the price to eight diamonds because I'm cutting my what I'm selling in half. Okay, so now it's going to be eight diamonds as you can see. And this is my sell intent chest, and this is really important. This is where I tell the system what my sell intention is as a shop owner. I'm saying, hey, I want to sell 64 blue ice, um, or I want to sell 32. In this case, I'm going to actually cut that down to 32 for my, that's the new amount I'm going to be selling. Okay, so that's awesome, but there's actually a problem because previously the system was calibrated to sell 64 blue ice, but now I said I wanted to calibrate it to 32. Technically, down below it's calibrated to 64 still, and there's actually a mismatch. Well, thankfully, because of that mismatch, the system's smart enough to account for this, and it's actually not going to, it's, it's fully disabled, so there's no way anyone can interact with the store. Once again, as you can see, redstone um, connection severed. So that's critical. Um, the reason for that is we want to make sure that neither party is cheated out of anything. Um, we want to make sure that the player buying gets all the items that they're supposed to be getting. So there's no issue. But how do we make the system work? We want we, want, we still want to sell 32. How do we fix that? Well, all we have to do is step on this reset button. This will give us all the items that's stored in the system below, and then it can refill and get to 32 again. There we go. We just got all that ice that was stuck down below. And now it's going to refill the system, and as soon as it gets to 32, just like this, it will actually stop at 32, and then it will make a bell, bell sound. Perfect. 
So before I go down and show you that it does indeed work and the store is activated, I have to quickly explain how this works right here. Um, so you can see, I'm basically, I give, I give the shop owner three slots of items that they can sell at once. Um, that's expandable if you want, but that's something you can figure out with your admin. If you want, all you have to do is take out a piece of glass um, and they can either let you do that yourself um, or they can do that for you. Um, it's, it's really quite simple. But basically the way this is currently set up gives you plenty of flexibility and I think that's pretty much enough. So you can technically sell up to three stacks for whatever you want. So maybe you want to sell three stacks of whatever for 20 diamonds, whatever, you can do that. Um, so you have plenty of options there with how the quantity of what you're selling. Um, another thing that's important to note um, is that the chest below, so let's, let's check it out. Let's switch our game mode to creative. Okay, this chest right here is now a duplicate of this chest. They match. And basically, this chest is filled by the hopper, right? Right here you can see we load all the stuff in here, it goes into this hopper, and it goes down and fills this chest. Well, we need to make sure that whenever we put items into this cell intent chest, that we put them in, in the same exact way that the game would. So, for an example, I'll just grab some of these out for a moment. That's fine, I'll just do this, okay. So, if we wanted to sell um, two stacks of 64, and then a half stack, so two and a half stacks, we would have to make sure that we do this. We wanna put the full stacks first, because again, the hopper has to fill to this exact amount identically, otherwise it won't work. Um, so we can't we can't do something like this because that would never actually fill that way because the game fills left to right and then top to bottom. So right now, as you can see, the chest is filling up, but this one's gonna go 64 first, then this one will go 64, and then this one. So it will never match this. So instead you have to do this, two stacks, two and a half stacks will have to look like that, okay? So. However you place the items in here, it has to be exactly how the game would fill those slots when filled by a hopper on its own. So make sure you don't mess that up because that will mess up the system. But again, we're going to calibrate this back to 32. And as you can see, it no longer matches. And I'm going to step on this to get all those items back. And now it's filling up again. It's refreshed. And like I said, once it gets to that 32, it will make that chime noise from that bell like that and now we can check and of course the system is fully activated once again now now anyone can buy from the shop it's it's good to go okay um, and quickly what would it be like if I wanted to change items entirely well um, it's it's just as you imagine it's very simple um, all I have to do is just change a sign so I can put this new sign on here that says electric for 64 diamonds and I'd go up here, I'm not going to do it because it's the same exact method as I just showed you, so it doesn't make sense to show you the same thing twice. Then I put a regular elytra, one of these elytras. I just put an elytra right here, replacing this blue ice. And then I, I pull all the stock out, just take all the stock out like this, just empty that stock out. And then you step on this reset button to get all the items that are stored in the system below, give them back to you. And then you can put the elytra in here. Only when that's been done can you do that because you want to make sure you clean out the system first. Then you can fill this with elytra. You can change your price. You can set this to 64 if you want to um, sell elytra for 64 diamonds. And then you're good to go. So it's, it's very, very simple to modify the store very quickly. Um, and it took, again, a lot of effort to make sure it was that easy for the shop owner and even the player interacting with the store. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense how you would go about changing what you're selling entirely, again, without needing a single line of code change. Okay, so this chest right here is a chest shop. Um, it's actually a, a trapped chest. And what a trapped chest is, if you don't already know, is a chest that will give a redstone signal while it's open. So the entire time it's shut, this entire system is, is actually entirely offline. Um, besides like a couple blocks here and there that just need to be online for the system, but most of them are off. So that's really great. Um, so when this when this uh, chest opens, as you can see, redstone signal goes right through to the block. And that's because this block right below the chest becomes powered. We have a repeater coming away from that block, pointing into a random block with redstone dust on top. And then we have a comparator pointing into this block. If this block runs successfully, then this whole chain will execute. 
If this block does not run successfully, then nothing will happen at all, and most of the system will remain offline. So the way this works, let's look at the first, this first command. Um, this is repeat unconditional needs redstone, five ticks of delay. Make sure you get this right. This needs five ticks. Um, this is one, one, of the, one of the few blocks in the system that really needs that tick delay. So I'll always point that out. These blocks right here are all chain conditional, always active. Of course, no ticks of delay in these. Okay, so make sure you put all that, all get all those settings right. If you get those settings wrong, the system's gonna not work. And if it doesn't work, then it's because you did something wrong. I mean, clearly you can see here it works. It's and it works on all platforms, like I said. So if it's not working for you and you built it, it's because you messed up somewhere. Okay, so here's a command. We, we're using test for blocks, um, and that's basically a command that compares two blocks to see if they're the same. And when we use that on a chest, it will actually check the orientation of the chest too. It wants to know, is the chest facing the same direction as that chest that it's testing against? Um, and it also needs to make sure that every single item in the chest is identical. Um, so what this command is doing is the first two coordinates are actually the same coordinate, and that's the chest up above in the shop owner's quarters where the shop owner has set the price. So that price, that, that chest where the shop owner set the price is the first two coordinates right here. And then this last coordinate, that's the chest outside that the player interacts with. We, we basically need to make sure those two are identical. So very quickly, because in case you aren't following, we need to enter the coordinates for this chest twice. And we're basically making sure, looking to see when the outside chest matches this one identically. And it will only match when that player has put in eight diamonds. Okay. I'm gonna show you a quick example with regards to that. So as I said, um, we need to make, check when this matches and they have, when we put the eight diamonds in there, that's the only time it will match and then the rest of the commands will run. Um, you might also be wondering, why do we have all this glass? And why did I rename it the filler? Well, the reason that we have all this glass is basically because we need this, these two chests to be identical and giving the player less places to mess up makes it a smarter system. So that way, when the player looks at this, there's, it's very obvious where their payment has to go. They don't think, oh, do I put it up here? Do I put it down here? Am I putting it here? They know I'm putting it right in the center. That's where I have to drop it. Um, and again, on, on, on most platforms, and definitely on PC, you can just press a button and have it jump into the chest. And then you get your payment. So that's another reason. It just makes it easier to even pay. So long as you get the right amount counted out, you can just shift press it into the, into the chest. Um, and that this, the reason I renamed the glass to filler, well, you'll see in a moment. So now that you understand this command and you have that plugged in properly for your world, um, now we need to do a command to basically start to prepare the, the player's order. So now that, now that we know that they paid and they have enough, this command block can run, and now we need to prepare their order. So it just so happens that this is where their order goes. This is what they're buying. So we need to destroy this chest that, so, make, so we make it drop all of its contents. So that's what this is, destroy chest. So plug in the location of this chest for yourself, where that, wherever, wherever that is for you, and then type the command verbatim. Um, now, it goes without saying that you don't have to build this identically like this. It just has to be functionally the same. So you just need to make sure um, everything's connected the right way, um, and you can move certain parts of it around, and it's fine. Just so long as everything is um, all connected the right way, all the commands are correct, all the, lo all the locations are correct, and then you're fine. Um, and you need to make sure that all of these chests are facing the same direction. Like all the chests are facing frontwards, like facing out this way. And if you notice, all the chests upstairs are facing the same direction. See, that's the front of the chest. They're all facing the same direction. Okay, that's important. Otherwise, the system will not work. Okay, so now that we destroy the chest, we need to get rid of the trash. So basically, we need to get rid of the glass that dropped. Um, and that's where the filler thing comes in. I renamed it filler just so it's a shorter name in the command. Technically speaking, you could actually just do this um, and it would work just fine. Um, that You can do that too. So long as it's one word, um, you can just type it as one word. If it's two words, it needs a quotation marks. Um, okay, so you're gonna plug in again, you're gonna plug in the coordinate of this chest right here, right into here. And then you're gonna type in the name uh, of your glass, and I recommend, re recommend rename it, re renaming it in an anvil to something like trash or filler. Again, just because it shows up shorter in the command and it's easier. If you didn't do that, you'd literally have 
something this long, lime stained glass with, again, you have to have quotes around that because it's all, there's spaces in between. Um, and that would just takes up a lot more room with the code. It just, it's just annoying. So type this just like this. And now we're gonna, we have to kill a chest because this chest, as you can see, is called cell intent. And when this chest breaks, it drops the, that chest as an item. So we have to kill that chest called cell intent. So here we're plugging in those same exact coordinates for that chest and Oops, no, right here. This no, this kill this kill command. We're gonna plug in the same coordinates of that of that chest, and then target type in the name, because um, it's not called chest anymore. It's called cell intent. So you have to type in whatever you named it, and also you have to type it in whatever color you named it. So if you happen to name it a color, then you have to enter it exactly like that here. Um, if you if you don't have to use um colored text, by the way, this is just something that I like to do to spice up the system. Um, it's actually available on all platforms. If you want to do it, just go ahead and look up. Uh, Minecraft colored text and you'll find uh, all sorts of resources on that. It's very simple, very easy to do, and it works on all platforms now. Okay, so that's a command. And now, now that we've deleted all the trash, so the, the, the chest and the glass, all that's left over is the item that the person purchased. So now we, we need to send that those items to the player. So we're going to once again type in the coordinates of the chest that we broke. Um, we're teleporting any items that are left over, and we're going to teleport them to the nearest player to that chest outside. So plug in the, ch the location for the chest as it, as it exists outside, where the player interacts with that shop. So that way, the nearest player to this chest will get the items. Um, it goes without saying, this is actually the case for almost every system in Bedrock, and maybe Java, but definitely in Bedrock. Um, basically, if it's smartly set up, then it will target the location that, that the um, shop is located. Like in this case, everything, all the commands target this chest and target the nearest player from this spot right here. So if you're interacting with it and then you buy something and another player is actually closer to the chest than you are, well, they will get the item, not you. So you need to make sure that if there are people around, then you wanna make sure you're closer to the chest than they are when you buy something. That way they don't get the item instead of you. That's just a limitation because um, we can't actually detect who um, who interacted, like who, who clicked the button specifically, things like that. Um, we can only uh, test the nearest player to the button or the nearest player to the, the chest in this case. So that's how that works. Um, again, here's a command. Um, so make sure you entered that correctly and plugged in the correct coordinates for the teleporting those items to the player. And now that now we basically need to prepare the system for um, the next the next purchase, the next sale. So we're going to clone an empty cell intent chest back into place. That way it can start filling up and getting ready for the next order. So here, here's a clone command for that. Um, this is just cloning the block above it, so one up, one, one up on the Y axis. Um, and it's gonna clone it to a certain location, which happens to be this location right here. So basically we're just cloning the spot one above it to right there. And now, we're, for these three commands, we're, we're gonna use the coordinates for this chest outside. So get that coordinate again. The, and this is where we're going to get, send some positive read, uh, positive feedback to the, the user who just paid um, and interacted with our store. So um, we're going to, again, we're plugging the coordinates and we're just going to display a message to them. Thanks for your business. Just, you know, a kind message from the business owner. Um, and now we're going to play a positive sound at the player to really get that dopamine rush going so that they just become little addicts and they have to keep on buying from your store and making you rich. You know, it's so important. So this random.org sound is very positive sounding. Um, so that's why I like to use it for instances like this. And again, coordinates as we've already been told. Um, and now this is essential. Uh, this whole system would be kind of broken if you didn't do this, very broken if you didn't do this. You need to make sure that you um, take their payment. So you, you basically delete their, their payment. So when they interact with the store, and they put their eight diamonds in to buy something, they, um, like at this point, all the way up in this point into in the command, they still have the diamonds in the chest. This is when uh, the diamonds get removed. So you need to clone an empty version of the chest shop back into place. Okay, so this is identical as the trap chest, and it goes right back into place. All the rest of the chests in the system are regular chests. The only chest that's a trap sh um, trapped chest is the chest shop, and that's only because this one actually powers and starts up the whole system. The rest, like the cell intent chest, is not powered, and you should not leave these powered. These, these should be a regular chest, all the other chests, okay? 
All right, so that's how that works. So we clone this back into location over there. And this all happens in a single game tick. Um, like as soon as this activates um, after, you know, after it executes on first tick and then five ticks after that, um, every five sticks. But um, yeah, so this this will hold, this whole chain will execute instantly in one tick. It's really, really, really fast. It, basically instant. Of course, you can see that here. There we go, instant. And, and the hearts, pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna put this ice back in the system. I don't want it carried around on me. Okay, so let's go over the payment mechanism here. This this, this is how we pay the shop owner um, to make sure they get all their money. So right off of this destroy chest command, um, put a comparator facing into an impulse block. Impulse unconditional needs redstone. Zero ticks of delay. And here we're going to clone. Um, a chest, a uh, specific location, we're actually cloning the payment chest again. So the payment chest that is up in um, the shop owner's quarters, we're going to plug in those coordinates twice. And then the third location is where we want to send that payment. So uh, in, this, in this case, we're cloning this chest right here, this where the um, user has, where the shop owner has set the price of the, um, their items. We're gonna clone it right up here, right in this spot right here, right there. Um, this can be anywhere for you. Obviously, it doesn't have to be identical to this at all. It doesn't have to look at like this in any capacity. Um, but that's up to you. You can make this how you want. And the reason we do this is because now we're gonna target this exact location with a bunch of commands. So whatever location you've chosen, make sure it's above a hopper. Again, as you can see, it's a hopper. Um, and that feeds into a chest at some point. It could be a double chest, whatever you want. Um, shulker, it can be whatever you want it to be. Okay, so make sure you take note of that exact location because we're going to need that location for the next couple commands. Okay, so once again, these first two locations are that chest and the third location is uh, that area you're going to send the payment right above a hopper. Now we need to, these are all chain conditional, always active. Now we need to set a location, that location that you, yeah, you that you, um, that I told you to keep track of. We're gonna send that, uh, we're gonna set that to air and destroy it. So we're gonna store that chest now. Once again, plug in those coordinates again, and we're gonna destroy the chest, the chest shop item, because it now the chest dropped us an item called chest shop. So we need to destroy that chest shop item. Because we otherwise, if we didn't do this, that, that would end up in the payment chest, and we don't want that to happen. We wanna make sure that all that ends up in the payment chest is the payment that um, is decided upon by the shop owner. And now we're going to get rid of the glass. So again, here's the command for that. Plug in the location that's above the hopper for yourself right there, and you're good to go. Um, now, why, the reason that we're cloning a chest up there, if, if you haven't already realized this, um, we know that if the player interacted with the system and made it this far, that they, they, they put in the exact payment that's right here. We know that that's the exact amount that the shop owner should be getting paid. So we can just clone this location um, right up here, and then basically give them that as their payment. Um, so that's how that works. That's how they get the proper payment every time. Okay, so this is the particle system. And I can show you that right here. Oops. So that's how we get all those hearts. It's really, really satisfying. Um, I think it's a great addition to the system. I, I love it, um, no pun intended, because it's hearts, but seriously, it's awesome. Um, and if you wanna do that, yeah, here's what you do. So you just run a repeater from this block right here. Um, no text of delay into this block, which activates our particle system. So impulse unconditional needs redstone, no ticks of delay. And now we're gonna set a location to redstone. And of course, uh, redstone block. And that is this location right here. Um, oops. Okay, so this block disables the particle system. So we're gonna, basically setting the block above it to air once it gets powered. This needs redstone. So as soon as it gets powered, um, you'll see here that this is one of those cases where you actually need to turn off execute on first tick. If you left it like this, this is what they look like by default. If you left it like this, this, this would not work. Because um, what this means is we have we want to delay 40 ticks, but with this with this checked on, this means that, um, this basically means that it will, it will run instantly, like on the first tick instantly, but then every 40 ticks after. But if we turn this off, then it will actually wait 40 full ticks and then run. So we want this to really wait. And it's actually better if this 
Um, you could technically get away with maybe doing this as an impulse, but I don't recommend it because um, impulses can sometimes mess up and then the redstone block gets stuck there and doesn't go away. So in this case, um, with this system, I would, I would definitely leave this on repeating unconditional needs redstone. Um, and this delay right here, this 40 ticks here, this represents the amount of time that you want the heart to stay active at the player. So that's two seconds. 20 ticks is, is actually um, one second, so 40 ticks is two. So if you want the hearts to last 30, uh, for three seconds, you just do 60 ticks. So whatever makes sense to you, you can do that. I thought 40 ticks was enough, but that's up to you. Um, so that's how you do that. Just again, make sure this is uh, off so it looks like that because you do not want this executing on first tick. Otherwise, it will ignore this whole delay and it won't work right. It will basically cancel the particle system instantly. You don't want that. Okay, so um, here, this is where we're going to, this is our particle command. Um, again, this is repeat unconditional needs redstone. Um, this can execute on the first tick. We want this on in this case. It's pretty rare when you want this off. In this case, we definitely want it on. And we want to delay um, the, the speed at which these hearts appear so that it happens five ticks apart. And five ticks apart is a quarter of a second. And that's perfect for this. Um, in my testing, that was the most satisfying. And I, you can test it if you want. To, you can tweak it to what you want to, but that's the best that I found. Um, and we're going to target the player that's closest to that chest outside so they get those hearts. So um, I happen to be the only player around and I'm the closest player to this chest, so I'm getting the hearts in this case. So plug in this exact command as you see it, um, exactly like this. Copy all of this perfectly and then the hearts will appear right in their face. Again, just like this. Look at that. They're actually following me right in my face. Pretty awesome. Hard to miss that, right? Okay. So. Now we have um, the system that actually checks um, the, com the compare intent. So this is comparing the compare intent chests, if that makes sense. So basically what's happening here is it's checking to see if this compare intent, uh, in intent chest that the um, shop owner has set matches the one down below. Um, if they do match, that means, well, that's great. That, that it matches what the shop owner is hoping to sell. So everything should, everything's great. All lights are green, we can sell, we can open the store. However, if these don't match, like in the beginning, how you saw they didn't match, if they don't match because, say I went from selling 64 here and I cut it to 32, there would still be 64 in this bottom chest. So even though I put 32 here, there would still be 64 down here. So um, because of that mismatch, of course, the system would, would uh, disable itself and this is the system that makes sure that that happens it, this, this this system right here is responsible for disabling and checking for um, when it, the when there's mismatches and also it's responsible for something really neat and that's locking and unlocking this hopper which the way the system works is uh, I'm so proud of it but basically um, when it detects that these are the same when they're identical like this it will actually make a redstone block appear can, like that's touching this hopper and that will actually lock the hopper. So this hopper, no items can go into it and no items can drop out of it anymore. So that basically freezes this the system at 32, which is our cell intent, which is perfect. Um, an example of that is if I take out this whole stack, you can see that that um, redstone block disappeared immediately. And now it's letting, it's basically letting the hopper drop items through and once it gets to 32, it will automatically close up and it'll lock again. See? Perfect. That's how that works. So that's what the system is going to do. So let's look at that system now. I can put these back. I don't know why I need to do that. I just need to. As if, as if I don't have enough ice in the system, guys. Okay. So let's look at this. Um, these first two locations are checking the upper chest in the sh um, where, where the shop owner has set the intention. So that's where that is. This is the upper chest that the shop owner interacted with to set their intent. And this is the lower one that the hopper fed. Okay, so this is the lower one that's right there. So once these two are the same, and this again is repeat unconditional, always active, zero ticks delay. This is one of the few blocks of the system that's always active and it needs to be always active. Um, okay, these are chain conditional, these two right here. And basically when, when this test positive and they do match identically, this will lock the hopper. So this is setting setting a redstone block at a certain location, which happens to be a location that's touching the, the hopper directly. It has to be a location that's touching the hopper directly. Um, that way it will lock it. So so long as it's touching it right in front or on either side, then you're fine. 
So whatever location it is for you, plug it in. And now right here, um, since we know it matches, and since we know our hopper is locked, um, the store is open, we're good to go. We can re-enable the store. So now we need to make sure the store is re-enabled and active, ready to go, because it matches now. So we're gonna clone the block that's above this command block to a certain location, which this happens to be a comparator. We're gonna clone it right back to here. Um, and we, 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 need, we need to make sure it's facing the same exact direction so that when it clones, when it clones, it's facing the right way. So now, once this clones back into place, the redstone connection is once again connected and this is, the store is back online. So as you can see, this block has two comparators coming off of it on either side, one on either side. Um, on this side, this is another, this, this chain right here will also run when, when the um, blocks are identical, when both intent chests match. And what happens here is we're gonna, this is impulse unconditional needs redstone. And we're gonna set a certain location to redstone block. And that is right here. So basically, now we can turn on our um, redstone lamp and indicate that the store is now ready, it's active, it's on, you can come go shopping. So that's plug in the location for your redstone block right into here. And this right here is a not notification system to let anyone within a 20 block radius of that chest outside know that the system is ready by playing that little bell sound to them. Um, I thought this feedback was great because it was helpful for me um, when I was setting, like, as a shop owner, when you're inside setting up the shop, that little bell lets you know if everything's um, calibrated correctly down below. If you don't hear that bell, you know something's wrong and it's not calibrated. So it's good to have that feedback for the shop owner who's like, um, like updating the system. Um, if you don't want that bell sound to go to every player, which I have it set to right here in a 20 block radius, you can limit the block radius to be smaller or you can make it target only the shop owner. So you can give it, the, the, sh the shop owner should have their own tag. So whatever, each shop owner should have their, a different tag. No, no two shop owners should have the same tag. But in this case, let's say we want to target just a shop owner, we can do tag equals owner, like that. Um, now, it will only target the, ta um, the owner. So no one else, even though it says add A, no one else will hear that but the owner. Um, if that's up to you, I, I'm, I'm fine with everyone hearing it. That's, that's how you would do that if you don't know. Okay, so now this system right here, this system is what plays out when the intent chests don't match. And this is what disables our whole store if they don't match. So when this is powered, this disables the redstone torch. So place any block here um, and then the redstone torch on top. And once this is powered, this is unpowered. But when it detects that they're not the same, when there's a mismatch, this tests negatively. So this turns off and then this redstone torch turns back on, which activates this little system here. This disables the shop. So impulse unconditional needs redstone, zero ticks of delay, set location to error, and that is this location. So plug in this coordinate for your comparator, and that will make sure that it turns to error and it's deleted. Now, these two blocks are chain unconditional always active. That's why they're able to curve like this. Otherwise, they wouldn't normally be able to do that. So. Now, chain notification is always active again, no text is delaying these guys. So set a location again to air, and this happens to be disabling this light. So we can turn this to air because now it's offline, the store's closed. And now, um, in all likelihood, what we need to do to make, like if we do detect a mismatch, what we probably need to do is unlock the hopper so that more items can come through, and that will hopefully make a match. So maybe it's at 32 and it needs to get to 64. So we should unlock the hopper so we can keep on counting up to get to 64. So here, we're just going to, whichever spot that you, you chose for your redstone block to, that locks the hopper, you're going to plug in that same location and set it to air. So chain unconditional always active and that will turn out to air and removing it. So I'm unlocking that hopper so that I can try to match again. So that's how that works. Um, and now I have a, a unique little special fail safe built into the system that I'll show you guys uh, because if you know anything about command blocks, you might be thinking something, but you might be thinking I overlooked something here, um, and I didn't, and I can show you that. So if I take all this item all out of the system for a second, all the stock out, collect all that stock. Okay, as you can see, all the stock is empty from the system. Um, if I remove this blue ice, technically this cell intent chest will match the one below, which means there's no mismatch. And that means that technically speaking, the store will be enabled. 
and the player could accidentally buy absolutely nothing. Well, I've uh, gone ahead and made sure that I put in a couple protections to make sure that it doesn't happen because we do not want that happening, clearly. So I have another detection system to, to check to see if this, if this chest is empty and if it stays empty for a certain period of time. So if it stays empty for three seconds, then an item will be tell like will basically appear in the chest. And once that item appears in the chest, it will force a mismatch. Um, so these chests don't don't match anymore, and that will close the store. So let's check that out. So right now they match. Um, they, well, right now they don't match. Um, so the store is as you've seen closed. However, if I take this out. That beep means they match now, it's sort of open, but you can see this paper appeared already, right? So um, this paper says, you can't leave chest empty. This is just a message to the shop owner, so they are aware of this, like don't do this, this is bad. Um, so let's go check out right now. Oh, did you see that? The light flickered barely. Um, again, there's a, a very small three second window if the shop owner was to leave that chest empty that a player would have to interact with the store and try buying from it and get gypped. So that's the only time that technically a player could lose money. And that's, again, you can make that window as small or as large as you want. Three, three seconds to me seem the best. Um, you don't want too small because otherwise it'll be too hard to use the system. Basically, um, or it could be annoying, but yeah, that's basically, uh, Actually, you could probably get away with making it smaller because I did open up these two slots and previously I hadn't done that. So, I mean, you could always go like this and take this out and it would never be a problem. Yeah, so technically you can have like a shorter delay even if you want. Um, yeah, that doesn't even matter actually. You could do that. Um, so right, I'll show you that when I go down below. But yeah, so this system is cool because it forces a mismatch because obviously now this block, this chest has a paper in it and this one doesn't, so they don't match. So this is the store closes. Um, Okay, so I'll quickly explain. Oops, I'm in the wrong mode, I can't fly. Oops, I spelled that wrong, it's special. Okay, now I can load this back in. Do, 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 do. Okay. And we can set our cell intent back to 32. Okay. And as, as you can see, that paper automatically gets deleted for me. I can't even take that paper. Okay, so here's the system to check for um, if it's empty. So it's going to be repeat unconditional always active, uh, zero ticks to delay. This is again one that's always active. So test for blocks again and we're going to check to see if these two, um, it's again we're testing uh, different chests against each other. So these first two coordinates are the same and they are actually this cell intent chest. So we're going to see if we're checking to see when the upper one matches this one right here which is an empty cell intent chest. If at any point this one matches it for long enough, um, like this, then then this system will will run over here. This right here, um, this this is chain unconditional always active. Again, no tick delay. And here we're going to actually delete that paper that we give the player um, constantly, so that they can't take it. Um, as you can see, right here, if I let that paper appear. If I click on the paper, it disappears. I can't even take it out of the inventory. It just disappears. Every time it appears, it's gone. Um, yeah, so we can actually leave that, and that's that's fine. Um, so this is what you type. And the reason that we have a one here is because that paper is actually a unique paper. That's That command will not delete any regular paper from the player. Um, it's actually only going to delete paper if it has a data value of one, and I can show you that quickly in a moment. So. Um, if this block runs um, and it realizes that yes, it does these these two blocks that are um, these two chests are empty, they do match. So if they if it does determine that they are empty, this comparator will feed into this block, and this block right here has the same exact command. So copy and paste this block, this command into this one, or you can just copy this block and then place it here and then change the settings. This is impulse unconditional needs redstone. And this, this tick delay right here, this represents how long of a delay you want before that paper appears in the chest. Um, so in this case, again, previously to like this, I actually updated the system before I showed it, made this video. 
But previously, I only had one slot in the middle open, but I thought, you know, I may as well future-proof the system and make it better for players who want to sell multiple things. So now, because of that, um, it's actually easier to deal with the paper because you can just place an item into the left, and then when you click on the paper, it disappears because when you place an item right here, it won't, it won't be empty anymore anyway. But before, what was happening is there was glass right here and just the item. So if you take the item out right away, the item would replace itself so quickly that you wouldn't be able to place a new item in, so we had to have some sort of delay. But now, because of that extra opening, you don't really need to worry about that. So technically speaking, you could actually get away with having, I would I would say, zero ticks of delay here. We can, we'll try that. But anyway, so that this command is, again, the same as what we saw before. Um, here is, I just call this warning, this is chain conditional always active. Um, and we're gonna clone the block above, above this command block to to the location of our cell intent above. So here is the block with, here's the chest with that, that um, letter in it. Uh, so again, it's a piece, piece of paper that's been renamed because of the anvil to you can't leave chest empty. So we're gonna clone this chest up here into this location. And that's, that's how that paper appears there. So let's test it, I'm curious actually, really quickly. So this is zero text to delay, which means technically you should instantly put the paper in there when it detects a mismatch. There we go. Yeah, but when the text are both empty, it will instantly put that paper in. So now there's, there's virtually no way um, a player, this is even better, and there's no way a player can interact with the store at all now, because it's instant. Um, so yeah, now the system's actually all just so much better. So once 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 you're, um, yeah, there's no, there's no opportunity for a player to mess up now and, and interact and get cheated. So yeah, if your cell intent is, I want to sell 32 of these, again, you just put those there, you click on that, that's gone, and then you step on this, and then you get that stuff back that was in the system and you can just put this back in like that and then it will just filter back down and it'll stop at the 32 again so that's perfect so again uh yes updated leave this at zero takes to delay that's your best bet impulse unconditional needs redstone and we're good to go um again this clones block above and now we need this go over very quickly this reset mechanism here um and then that's that's all i'm going to explain for the rest of the shop um Okay, so right here, as you can see, when this pressure plate gets stepped on, it powers the block beneath it, but then also this block by extension. Um, in this block, yes, this block is um, destroy the hop, the hopper and chest. So that's right here, destroy these two guys. So type in, um, this is gonna be impulse unconditional needs redstone, zero ticks of delay, fill coordinate, um, so basically this, the lower one is the chest, seven is the chest, um, and then eight, this one right here is the hopper. Again, this is just down on the Y value, up on the Y value, and then that just destroys both. Um, these all need to be chain unconditional always active. Make sure they're chain unconditional always active, otherwise you're gonna run into issues. So uh, none of them have any tick, tick delay. So now for all of these commands, you need to plug in the location of this chest. So wherever this chest is for you, plug in that location for these commands. So now we're gonna kill the glass, which you've seen a million times by now. Okay, so plug in the location right here, and we kill that glass. Now we're gonna kill the chest, because the chest is gonna be named cell intent here. So kill the chest name cell intent, uh, however you typed it, and then again, plug in the coordinates. And now we're gonna kill uh, the hopper at that coordinate, and I would do R equals three here, especially if, the, if that uh, redstone block's next to it, sometimes it can pop out of that hole or whatever, it just, it just makes it a little bit safer. Um, I, I ran into a couple issues when it was set to R equals two. And now, um, now all that's left over is the items that the shop owner has put into the system. So now we need to get those items back. So we're gonna teleport the items from that location, again, plugging in that location, in a radius of three to the player, um, the nearest player with the tag shop um, owner. So basically the shop owner. So that way, any item that the shop owner has put into the system, they will go back to the shop owner. Obviously, it goes without saying, every time you build a system for a different shop owner, you need to give um, the, the owner a different tag. So just change this tag to whatever it is in your world or server or realm or whatever. And now we need to clone this back. So again, uh, as I said, all these blocks up here are chain unconditional, always active. Um, we're cloning uh, a certain location that's uh, like two blocks tall, which right here. We're going to clone this block and then this block back into place over here. So the first XYZ value is this guy, the second is this guy right here, and then the third XYZ value is this bottom chest. OK, 
Okay, that's, and that's what it looks like. So first value, which is the bottom of the chest, and then the hopper above it, and then it will clone it back to the bottom chest, which will stack properly like that. Okay, so if you didn't realize, this is the third time that we've used this chest in the system. Um, it's just an example of how efficient I made this code. It's as, as efficient as I possibly can make it. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, if you, I actually didn't show you guys this yet, but there's uh, another cool feature. Um, depending on your realm or server, um, yeah, this may or may not be a problem for you, but in my server, I play with just my friends and we all trust each other, there's no issues there. So I can actually, um, everyone's in survival everywhere, even the spawn, everything's safe, no one, no one's gonna destroy anything, everyone respects everyone's stuff, no one steals, it's, it's all, it's, it's great. But uh, that's not always the case for realms and servers um, where there's players that you don't know or people that you don't know. Um, so basically there's some protection in, in, in store for this area. Um, which I can go over more in another video if you guys don't know, but now that I'm not the shop owner anymore, I don't have that tag anymore, I'm actually in survival. So, I mean, not in survival, I'm actually in adventure. So there's no way I can interact with anything literally this far away. This this yellow block here, all the way to that yellow block, that yellow block, and it goes around the whole perimeter, way into the sky, and then below ground. So there's no way that I can interact with this, um, this building. I can't break in, I can't steal anything, I can't break the glass, there's just nothing I can do. Um, of course, I could press this button, but this button wouldn't normally exist. This is just here for demonstration purposes. Um, and of course, they can still interact with and buy from the store. Uh, at best, they can do this and annoy you. That's, that's about all they can do. But there's nothing else that they can do. So um, most um, realms and servers do stuff like this. Um, well, they'll like, they'll put certain area in adventure and then they will let certain players have certain areas that they can build on, like shop owners, for example, can build in certain just districts in like a selling area. So only the shop owner in that area has survival. And this is an example of what that might be like for that realm of server. Um, and again, if you want me to go over commands like how to set, um, basically how to set uh, boundaries and stuff like that, I can I can do that in another video. Um, and once I become a shop owner, of course, then these pressure plates work for me, and then I can come in and out seamlessly without any issue. Maybe as well fix this. And again, I usually put glass in front of this. I just took it off for the demonstration, but we want to make sure it shouldn't be a problem because it happens in, in a single game tick. But it's just for my own satisfaction, just to make me feel better. I like to surround things like that in glass just to just so I feel more comfortable that nothing will go wrong. Um, yeah, because we would not want that. Okay, so. Uh, yes, um, as for the door, I'll sh you know what, I'll show you guys the door in another video. If you guys don't know how to do a door like this, then I'll show you another video, because I this is 50 minutes long and I kind of don't want it to be any longer. Okay, so thank you so much guys for uh, checking out this video. I really appreciate your time. Um, let me know what you think of this, this video, because it took me a lot of effort uh, and a lot of thought, like really a lot of, uh, a lot of care and attention went into the system. Many, many, many hours of testing on live servers with players and whatnot, so it took a lot of effort. Um, and I, yeah, I, I'm honestly, one of the things I'm trying to do here in Bedrock is I really do try to elevate the coding game in Bedrock and give you guys something better than what you've probably seen before for Bedrock coding. So I am doing my best to give you guys the best systems and the smartest systems. So yeah, please, please comment, uh, share, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I really appreciate it. Um, thanks guys and have a nice day.